I just received an interesting package from Amazon late in the evening 20th of November 2023 and I will try to open it to see what's inside there should be two things related to each other first of all I th think I feel it here oh it's smaller than I thought the Pelican Edelstein ink in some kind of classic blue color called sapphire I bought it because I never tried this uh, type of ink I heard it was pretty dry and I like uh, the opposite I like wet inks but that might be because some of my pens are quite bad uh, have bad flow so who knows how this will work uh, some kind of small paper here wrapping around four only four cartridges okay well i bought it um because it was cheap and also because i like the box and who knows if i like the ink maybe i will continue to buy uh, the pelican edelstein ink and i'm quite conservative when it comes to colors of ink so i mainly use black blue and very seldom green but that's most about all the colors i use so it will be interesting hope to try it with some pen okay i was just uh, learning from amazon's webpage that this little tin box was supposed to hold six cartridges so it seems like something is wrong right from the start here i only got four as you all saw and um, two are missing it seems like something went wrong either in the pelican factory or on amazon could it be that someone sent those back and kept two i don't know and yeah and even here it says six stick pieces one two three four no four patronen okay next thing i hope will not be such a surprise for the worse okay already now i can see that on the web page uh, it showed a bigger box um, this should be one piece of duofold big red with the nib in the size fine i should maybe tell you a little personal story bef uh, before i start uh with this uh unboxing it is that maybe 10 years ago uh when i just started well well i didn't just start um, by that time but i started to get more interested in uh finer pens like fountain pens and um, because i was interested in pens even before but i made a test on parker's webpage where you could find out your sort of pen personality what kind of pen personality ty personality type you were and uh, I made a test and there were several pens you could um, match with your personality and you made a test you answered a lot of questions and then they uh, suggested a pen for you and lo and behold the pen they suggested for me was the Parker Duofold and it cost about um, let's uh, let me see or let me try to remember it must have been around 350 dollars or euros or something like that and i thought like never in my life i would spend that much of money on a pen too bad because the pen was very nice and uh, i could really see how it would fit uh, my personality well at least i think that many pens fit my personality but i could see that that one really could fit with the answers i gave on that test but what do you think happened well i think it was in 2016 maybe or something later maybe i bought something 
which was probably my first very expensive pen and it was the Parker Duofold. So um, time again for time again for another Duofold. I will see what the box holds because um, the the, fir the picture on on um, Amazon was bigger, so I don't know. It's it's a kind of I don't know, not canvas box, but some matte finish to the paper here. And let me open it. Let me open the box. Oh, and here it rests. The pen rests here. Uh, cold from the delivery. It's cold in Sweden right now. And the pen is cold. And you see here, it's got a little bit of what you call this condense. Um, it is the big red. It seems to be the big red. And you can see here. Can you see it? Should I get it into focus? Where's the camera? Will it focus on the right spot? Yes. No. Yes. Silver trims. The Parker Arrow, it's silver trims or chrome trims. Let's hope it's brand new because I really don't feel very safe now anymore or safe is the wrong word, but I can't be quite sure. Let me see the nib, if it's a fine, it says it's a fine. so. So far, so good. Actually, I wanted a medium, but it was not available because I have fine on my other duofold. Yeah, seems to be the right pen. Is it something stuck? Something inside here? Let me see. It's a converter. Everything looks good so far. And uh, who knows, I hope it's not any ink here inside, like from some pre-owner pre or from someone who owned it before. Actually, I can't find, see it, that that should be the case. The big red feels classic. Yeah, and I put it next to my black one. You see, they are pretty similar. Uh, the new model has like one piece of uh, chrome here, uh, one piece, one ring piece here, uh, and uh, the older one has two smaller rings. And uh, I think that the arrow clip is the same. You may write to me if you know anything about pen exchange programs at Parker's place because um, I don't know about... Um, I would prob probably want to change for a medium if it was possible. I can try, try to show you uh, the pen next to a Pelican M200. I think it's called that. 
well I have to put it like that which I think is a very good pocket pen uh, the kind of size I use mostly on the go so to speak and it's also because of the price they are not that expensive and we also might compare it to another favorite of mine I really don't have to explain what pen this is. Well, I can do it anyway. It's the M800 by Pelican. We can put it next to Akaveco Dia number two. Or maybe we should, well, what's the logic in this? I don't know. Yeah. And why not also put it next to, let's see, let me see if I can find it. There is another writing instrument. Let me see where I put. Okay, let me put it next to something which you might think is almost the same as this orange let me put them separately here, here is a chinese copy chinese copy made by jinhao yeah they are so similar here they have another detail you see here's a chariot the jinhao chariot Chinese uh, copy, I would say, but look how similar they are. Is it like anything else from the clip and the top? And the nib. You know, I could tell you a lot about this pen because I used it so much and I liked it quite a lot but um, something made me go for the original uh, which which I will try to use and uh, see whether it was worth like the extra 90% of the price so to speak um, I think this is this cost maybe 10 to 20 or maybe 8 to Eighteen dollars or something like this, maybe even more expensive. Uh, maybe even more. You can find it cheaper, maybe than that. Um, yeah, too early to say anything about the writing experience. And let me also show another copy of the same model. This is a Moonman. I think it's called Moonman 100. 100. It's rather a copy of the older version you you can see it here um let me find focus yeah like that and size wise um let me also put another favorite of mine it's the pelican 1000 m1000 i would say that it's is probably my favorite pen um but it's not easy to um, choose between good pens sometimes. I could make a whole video uh, of me explaining why I like it most of this. Uh, one might ask why buy this kind of expensive pens and um, I can tell you that I'm a Swedish writer. I'm a writer um, in short and I love also a lot of beautiful things which are quite rare around here in uh, the concrete jungle of uh, the Swedish uh, society. Um, one becomes quite happy when writing with nice pens and uh, also just to have a glance at a beautiful pen at your desk uh, might inspire you or to touch it and open and just write a few lines makes you feel a little bit more well happy I don't know 
You also had to excuse my English because I normally don't speak English. It's not my mother tongue. Um, here you see uh, some of my pens. And um, you know, um, the AM800 is, is about the same size. I personally, right now at least, why I prefer uh, the dual fold is because of the uh, grip section. It's not anything which has nothing to do really with size, I think. I think just that the grip on the dual fold allows you, together with the nib, which is quite as the same size, allows you to be a little bit further away from the paper. Uh, by the way, it tapers here. You can see where my uh, finger uh, grips. I think it's a little bit higher up on the pen, so to speak, than when you grip the M800. You kind of uh, come with your finger closer to the paper and it makes something with the writing angle. Um, it's a preference for me, um, just, just about preference with writing angle. I think actually um, the, the dual fold, at least right now, is uh, more of a favorite than the M800, but uh, I'm really nitpicking and uh, they are great pens. The nibs, I would say, maybe also, I think that the dual fold is a little bit scratchier uh, than uh, the M800 and some people don't like scratchy nibs. I like when it scratches a little bit. That's why I usually write a lot with my steel nibs. Um, because I don't know why. Because I like a little bit fric friction when I write. I don't, I'm not 100% fond of this uh, smooth gold nibs. And then maybe you uh, ask me why then do I like the M1000? Well, this actually is a little bit, of, I don't know if the right word is scratchy, but it's an extra fine, so it makes makes it a little bit less, a um, little bit less smooth. It also has to do with paper, of course. I also like a little bit of cheaper paper. Um, I don't know if I will make any new videos explaining everything I tell you here. It's just me mumbling a little bit about some strange preferences when it comes to uh, fine writing. Uh, this was my first experience buying an expensive pen on uh, Amazon. Oh, sorry, I even picked the wrong pen. The ink experience, well, I have to contact Amazon about this, that it was only four cartridges. But so far, I think that, I mean, it looks like it's brand new. Or you tell me if you noticed anything uh, during the video, which makes you doubt whether it was brand new. I would probably have to say something about the copy here. Uh, I mean, they look very, very similar. They feel very similar. But when it comes to Jinhao, I noticed with their converters, it's horrible ink flow in those. I always get a, an air bubble right at the end of the converter. Uh, this time it's quite small. Often it's just the ink stops right like somewhere here and this ink uh, this uh, bubble of air doesn't disappear but the ink flow disappears so i always it, it's not enough to just knock uh, knock or make some movement on the pen you have to really open and start to twist the converter and uh, it can be a little bit messy sometimes but the ink flow from the converter is not good 
not at all. I have this issue with many of the sheep pens. The nib itself, once it writes, it's it's good. So, so it could it could be a really nice pen for. I mean, a fraction of the price, really. And uh, but there is a whole debate whether you should support Chinese brands doing like they are doing. I think like now it's like i tried this one and then i end up buying this one maybe i wouldn't have bought this one unless i bought uh, the cheaper one first because it makes you want to go to the original and the original is always best as far as i know when it comes to to pens and um, sometimes you can buy an a cheap pen and then go for the original later. Actually, I went for the original first and then bought, bought some copies and then bought another original. So strange story there. And because I am from Sweden, maybe I should also um, put this into this pen into comparison with uh, a Swedish classic, which is the Balograph Epoca a uh, ballpoint pen ballpoint pen so which is an old favorite of mine I, I actually i don't use the red one so often but it was red readily available here next to me so you can see the size and um, if you like ballpoint pens take a look at balograph because uh, you get a lot for the money Okay, already now I was I made a return request at uh, Amazon to Amazon for the two missing cartridges in this side inside this and it said something like I don't have to return this to them um, and they want me to um, based on your experience by Amazon returns how likely is it that you recommend Amazon to a friend or colleague well when it comes to um, this I've well, 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 I don't want to go to the extreme. Let me show you here um, the box that um, they said this would be delivered in. It's not the same box as I got it in. So just notice that. Maybe not a deal breaker, but still not good. I think I would have li liked this big box, I think. Speaking of um, used items, look at this box. Could it be that this has been owned by someone before? Because I think it looks scratched a little bit here on the tin box. Actually, it was quite, I think it was a cheap, uh, cheap price I got it for, uh, like 55 Swedish crowns approximately maybe four dollars or something well yes yes I wanted to make sure that this has not been used before by just doing a little bit of nip work here on the on the blank paper here can't see any sign of any spare ink here looks fine actually I'm planning to take um, a cartridge of black quink from my um, from my other duofold because I think I will only use this duofold now for the time coming so why not uh, just continue with the cartridge which I already started using and uh, yeah let 
connected. I think that will be fine. And uh, by the way, forgot to show you that um, it came with two converters here. Uh, sorry, two cartridges, two black, I think. But shouldn't it be some kind of documentation down there? I don't know. You tell me um, about um, if you know anything about buying expensive pens from Amazon. Is it possible? Is it worth it? What's your experiences? Okay, let me try to write with this pen. I noticed it was already the ink had flown through and uh, well, the sound is much more terrible right now because I don't have an external microphone, but doesn't matter. I'm writing on some kind of Clairefontaine, Clairefontaine um, copy paper. I think it's 90 grams. So I'm writing with, wow, wow, so smooth. I mean, I said it was scratchy on my black one, but doesn't. It's not true for this one. Pocket U fold, big red, black ink, quink ink, nib, fine, fine in both ways. Wow. This one had a really nice nib. I mean, you can't compare it with the Chinese knockoff. This is so much more quality. I mean, you maybe not, you don't feel it when you hold, hold the, the knockoff in your hand, but when you write, I mean, Wow, I forgot, almost forgot about quality when I wrote with the Chinese pens now for a while. Okay. Is it enough? Do you want to see more? The quick brown. Den snabba bruna räven hoppar över den lata hunden. Maybe you will learn some Swedish today. The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. Hmm. If you like it scratchy, then right in reverse. You will get an extra fine line. I think this is quite good actually. Can't complain actually. Whoever maybe return this could have made a mistake beauty piece of art by the way why not look a little bit at the, on the knockoff um, see how it writes let's see this one is a well, it also started like a dream. Jin Hao. You know, because I made a trick before, I think. Oh. 
because there is no air bubble. Well, it is a little bit, but it's ink in the feed, so never mind. I'm happy with no skipping here. Jin Hao, what is this called? I don't know. Oh, there you had it. There you had it. You see. This is some kind of size. Says only nib size, I think. Nib size six. Could that be true? I think it writes approximately like a fine medium, maybe. What do you think when you compare this? This is also, I think this is um, the quink blue. You see, it's skipping. You see, this is what I'm speaking of. This is why I really don't like. Um, the knockoff, but I don't know if it's the actual nib. Um, quink blue ink. Oops, this is even worse than it usually performs. Uh, ink. Well, shouldn't you see? It's mostly if it's something. It's when it starts. You see, it's always hard starts. When it's something happening, it's the start. You see. I think otherwise you... I mean... If you pay so little money, maybe it's worth it. But it also takes the pleasure away from writing a little bit when you know that your pen performs poorly. That's, I mean, it's, it's hard to sometimes before others um, justify uh, buying something like an expensive pen, especially when you have a knockoff that buys, uh, that writes relatively uh, well. I mean, that extra money you put into quality, is it worth it? I mean, I have, I know people that pays maybe like 8,000 crowns for their horse every month. And when I listen to those stories, I feel horrified a little bit. I mean, think of how many pens you could buy during a year for just a horse, to keep a horse in the stable and with food and everything, insurance and everything. And uh, I mean, it's also, it's like a Pelican M1000 every month. You can buy the whole assortment of pelicans for uh, only uh, like 12 months with a horse, something like that. 